Tells he's about to give a pretty smart take on this. Actually, way smarter than, um, actually even more insightful than anything I would have said. If you are a big fan of Tate, um, you shouldn't hold him to an ungodly standard. Like that isn't, that's not fair to you or to him. You're setting both yourself up for, um, for disappointment and you're setting him up for, for disappointment. Yeah. Um, wait, just wait until the information comes out. If you're left leaning and you hate Andrew Tate, um, don't, don't set yourself up for disaster like this. Like just sit and wait for, wait for the evidence to come out. There's, there's literally no reason for you to celebrate right now. You don't have to. If he actually did it and you want to like revel in that and you want to celebrate, well, then fine, do it. But wait, just wait. There's, there's absolutely no reason to get so caught up in this right now. Um, because if nothing ends up coming from this, um, man, you're going to look real dumb. Uh, and you're going to hate yourself. I get a message this morning from a guy that's very, very connected in uh, the, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? He's very connected in law and um, FBI, PD, you know, all Department of Department of Justice type Extremely thing? qualified guy. I don't want to give exactly what his job okay. is because you know who it is. Okay. He said the following. Patrick Bet David reacts to Andrew Tate being arrested. I'm doing Zooms. I'm doing a bunch of different things. People are texting me, your boy got down. And, you know, your boy, they took him down. They did all this. I'm like, listen, uh, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep uh, going. Uh, one more, one more, one, right there. Click on that one, right there. Click on that one. Zoom in a little bit. Okay. I said, don't know exactly the details of uh, Tate's arrest, but here's what I do know. A day after he publicly calls out one of Woke's heroes, Greta Thunberg, they raid his place? Strange timing. Meanwhile, we haven't seen anyone from Epstein's list arrested. Weird. Strange. Mm -hmm. Now go to the bottom. Uh, okay, what, <laughs> what, is the, what is the implication that Greta made a phone call? Or that like the woke police are actually like the real police now? What happened to, what happened to I like Romania? They don't f around with that cuck shit. That stupid woke bullshit. What happened to... I feel like I heard that a million fucking times. I like Romania. They don't cuck out to Western bullshit. I like Romania. They don't blah, 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 blah. Like... At the bottom, I say he's loud. He pushes the envelope. He frustrates the left. He points out hypocrisy. He's duplicating young men to do the same. Having said that, if they committed a crime, the proper agencies will do what they need to do. Till then, innocent till proven guilty. So then, then I get invited on this Twitter spaces with, again, the guy Mario Nufal. I think he does a fantastic job as a host. And I'm on there. And he says, so, Patrick, you've interviewed with him. You've spent many hours with him. How is he? How is he on camera? How is he off camera? I said, quite frankly, I liked him more off camera than on camera. And I liked him on camera. Yeah. I just liked him more off camera. I would agree. He says, uh, so what do you have to say about, you know, all this stuff that's coming out? I said, here's, here's a couple things you have to be very careful with. First thing you have to be very careful with is, I, I said, as a father, anytime the school calls me telling me what my son did wrong, my natural inclination is to say what? My son would never do something. Exactly. <laughs> Until I talk to him, I'm like, oh, shoot. You know, he, <laughs> did, yeah, well, you, you kind of did it again. Did it again. Oh, yeah. I know about you. So, so, and by the way, you know, that it ought to be that way. But, you know, parents ought to, you know, have a, a certain level of loyalty and belief in their kids. You know, if I get a call from somebody saying what you did something and I'm getting a call and I'm talking to the person. Damn, am I just a shit parent or an asshole? Bro, if my kids did some dumb shit, <laughs> I'm not gonna have his back at all. Nathan, you done fucked up. Time to figure out what we need to do to make it right. I mean, like, if there was some crazy person saying like, oh, your kid did blah, blah, and they didn't have like any proof for it, I wouldn't believe him, of course. But like, like if you did something stupid, you need to make it right. Like, that's on you. It's part of growing up. Uh, you and I are going to have a conversation, and then I'm going to sit there and say, listen, you know, it is what it is. Let's wait to see what's going on. Regardless of what it is, we have to know two things. Both can be right. One, uh, I was going to Bible study years ago when I'm an atheist, and this guy's trying to convert me. I'm like, listen, you're not going to do it. 25 years I've been an atheist. You think you can convert me? And I told him, I said, look, I've been to churches. I've seen pastors do this. I've seen pastors take advantage of, uh, you know, members, rip them off with money, marriages, what they were doing on the side, smoking weed, doing drugs having sex, and then they're claiming up there on stage that they're so mighty. He says, here's a rule number one about if you want to have a relationship with the man upstairs. If it's horizontal, you'll always be disappointed. If it's vertical, you'll never be disappointed. I said, explain that to me. He says, people are going to let you down, okay? Everybody is. You've let down your kids. You've, done, you've let down your parents. You've let, I mean, at that time, I don't have kids, but he's saying you've let down your parents. You know, your parents have let you down. Your sisters let you down. You've let her down. 
your friends, all this stuff. None of us walk on water. Okay, you just hope you don't make I the do. big mistakes. But we don't walk on water. We all make mistakes. I don't ever don't make a mistake. Don't be surprised ever. if a hero disappoints you. That's one. So years after that, I'm working at this church. There's one Assyrian ever, guy ever, comes to me. They want to create ever. an Assyrian part of this church. I won't mention the guy's name. And he says, man, I will kiss the pastor's feet. He's this, he's that. He's saying this in front of 30 Assyrians in this one guy's house, Wilson. And I said, listen, never ever put that much pressure on a man to be perfect. Because mm -hmm. he's going to fall. Never give that much, you know, love and attention and accolades to a human being. Give him love. Give him respect. But you're talking as if he's God and he can't make any mistakes. He says he can't. He's never going to make mistakes. I said, listen, I don't want that kind of pressure. And I said, I'm not, I can't help you guys out with this request that you have. Bring it to, to today, okay? You know, See, this is how you guys interview me on Twitter. I'm going to make mistakes, okay? I'm not going to be the nicest person, okay? Just pray to God. Whenever you see me on Twitter starting to fight with some 20-follower trans account, instead of holding me responsible, just say some prayers, okay? Pray to God, okay? The big man upstairs, he'll never let you down. Oh, you have I'm to the know downstairs. the people who really support this guy, they don't think he can do anything wrong. And that's unfair to him. And it's managing too much expectations for yourself. The other side, the people who can't stand, like on yesterday's Twitter spaces, one Romanian lawyer got on. He says, they're not going to let him be bailed out. He's not going to get out. They're probably going to do 15 to 20 years. And another guy comes in. He should go to jail. And another, you should go to jail. He's going to go to jail. Do you realize what he does? This is unfair. All this stuff that they're saying about what's going on with this, right? People, by the end of yesterday's Twitter spaces, Everybody said, this guy's going to jail for 15 to 20 years. If you're a salesperson, if you're an Uber driver, if you're somebody that's a, you're doing Uber E. Wait, did we just cut to an ad? Sounds like he's about to give a pretty smart take on this. Actually, way smarter than, um, actually even more insightful than anything I would have said. If you are a big fan of Tate, um, you shouldn't hold him to an ungodly standard. Like that isn't, that's not fair to you or to him. You're setting both yourself up for, um, for disappointment and you're setting him up for, for disappointment. Yeah. Um, wait, just wait until the information comes out. If you're left leaning and you hate Andrew Tate, um, don't, don't set yourself up for disaster like this. Like just sit and wait for the, wait for the evidence to come out. There's, there's literally no reason for you to celebrate right now. You don't have to, if he actually did it and you want to like revel in that and you want to celebrate, well, then fine, do it. But wait, just wait. There's, there's absolutely no reason to get so caught up in this right now. Um, because if nothing ends up coming from this, um, man, you're going to look real dumb. Uh, and you're going to hit yourself. Hey, here's what's going on. The Romanian lawyer also said something that was pretty fascinating. But the people who don't like him, let's not get it twisted. A girl yesterday tweets at me, some comedian, Nicole something. I don't even know what her last name is. But <laughs> she tweets at me and she says, you're, you're this and you're that. You're exactly this. I said, listen, the difference between me and you is you're emotional and you're speak, speaking factual. Like, this is going to happen. Mm-hmm. I'm being logical and paranoid. That's the only difference. I said, you're doing this, I'm doing that. Okay? And, you know, so, so the people that are happy that he got arrested, you know what crowd they're a part of. You know why, you know, they're celebrating whatever they're celebrating. Having said that, let's set that aside. Let's set those let's, two aside. Let's set that This aside. is the most important point to be thinking about. Yeah, okay? well, This me. is the most important point to be thinking about. If he committed the crime, he committed the crime. Okay? I don't know all the rules and regulations. I don't know, you know. Uh, One of my slight predictions for what's going to happen is, or what, this is a potential path. If he does get charged with, and it looks like there's a high likelihood of conviction, then the rhetoric will move from he didn't do anything wrong to, okay, maybe he did this lover boy thing, but that shouldn't be illegal. Like, those girls chose to go over there, and, like, they could have left. They didn't, like, their visas weren't actually expired or whatever. Like, they lied about that. They should have done more research. I think that's where the, um, I think that's where the conversation would move to next. Uh, Cardone got on and he says, well, I don't know anybody sure. that does all the right business and has six different uh, passports. Why do you need to have six different passports and et cetera, et cetera? Okay. It's a valid point. Why do you need a six different passports? Maybe that's normal in uh, Europe. Maybe that's how he gets around. Maybe it's a valuable thing to have passports. I know. I don't think that's normal in Europe at all. And my guess is in Europe, it's probably exceedingly rare to even have two passports. Um. I'm trying to think if people in Europe would be would if you live in the Schengen zone or the Schengen area, do you even have one passport? Because I don't know if you live in the if you, in the Schengen area, do you even need a single one? I'm not sure because I don't because they don't they shouldn't do passport checks at any of the um, zones, so I'm not sure. But maybe they mandate them in Europe because you guys are more likely to go to other countries. Um, 
percentage of European, oh, hold on, percentage of EU citizens with passports. 76% of British people have passports, 66% of Canadians. If 76% of Brits do, although they never lived in the Schengen zone. How many EU citizens have passports? Three point nine million EU citizens. Wait, what? That doesn't sound right. What? Is this EU citizens in England? The UK isn't in Schengen, but it used to be an EU passport. It used to be an EU passport. Oh, okay. billionaires that have multiple passports mm -hmm. maybe not six but i do know people that have two or three passports in that area it's actually very normal and for somebody to have don't forget multiple he, passports. he not so subtly addressed the fact that his father may or may not have worked for the cia yeah yeah, yeah. Weird, so right yeah so so but, but here's the part man like, we were doing a video a month ago on generational wealth remember when the whole yeah, thing was talking about andrew tate is actually accused of my understanding is that Andrew Tate is accused of him and his, I think he is specifically, I think, accused of the actual crimes are um, organizing a criminal organization and sex trafficking. And I think the actual accusation, I don't think the release was your information, but I think the idea is that he talks to girls online, he tries to get them to fall in love with him, then he flies them out, and then once they're there, um, through a combination of physical abuse and psychological abuse, he gets them to do cam work for him while he takes like 50% or all of the revenue, I think. I think that's what the accusation is. This is allegedly, allegedly, that's the accusation. I don't know if that's 100%. We'll see how it plays it in court or what happens, but that's what he's being, um, that's what the, I think that's what the allegations are, but I don't even know if formal charges have been filed on that yet. I don't know if formal charges have been filed on that in Romania yet, or if they need to file those to arrest somebody or hold them for 30 days. Yeah, and uh, sex trafficking, it's, it's called the lover boy technique. Generational wealth, generational wealth. Rothschild. And one of the things we, we realized is the Vanderbilts lost their wealth. They were the richest people in the world. They lost their wealth within two generations. Think about that. Damn. You're worth a few hundred billion dollars. The money's lost within two generations. But the Medici family and the Rothschild family has kept the wealth and the power for many, many years. You know what rule those guys follow? Hmm. One basic rule. Don't be loud. Yeah. Do not be loud. Don't call out the establishment. Don't be too opinionated. Stay low key. Keep a low profile. You don't see a Rothschild getting on TV, giving their opinions, running a podcast. You don't see a Medici family running the top podcast in the world. Now, having said that, the Medici and the Rothschild is playing a different game. Right. They're in, they're indirectly part of the establishment. Of course. Because they have they to the buy. They are the global elite. They exactly. Are the yeah. definition they, so, so, of the global elite. So for, for Tate... To go out and you keep calling out the heroes of the left over and over and over and over again, you're taking the ultimate, ultimate risk. This means the speed to stardom is very, very quickly, but the fall could also be very, very quickly by these guys trying to manipulate and take you down. FYI. One of the corruptest countries in the world is Romania. <laughs> you know how many people messaged me yesterday from Romania? Hmm. Listen, this place is corrupt. That lawyer on the Twitter spaces yesterday said the following. He said everything in Romania is about money. Everything. So if you want to buy them out to get out, you can do it. Mm -hmm. If other countries want to buy Romania, they can do it. Wow. If other countries want to call Romania to say, hey, man, you guys got to get this thing squared away Here's or else yep. we're not going to give you the support or we're not going to give you this. You have to do it because Romania, who's, who's Romania? Is it a top 20 empire? Is it a top 50 empire? Nobody thinks about Romania as one of the most powerful empires in the world that everybody wants to have a relationship with. Yeah, this ain't, this ain't Rome. No, this, yeah. this is definitely <laughs> Romania. not Rome. So meaning if a place like Romania can be bought to take a guy like this down, that is very possible. Not saying that's what happened. That's very possible. Then last but not least, I get a message this morning from a guy that's very, very connected in uh, the, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? He's very connected in law and um, FBI, PD, you know, all Department of, of Justice. Extremely qualified guy. I don't want to give exactly what his job okay. is because you know who it is. Okay. He said the following. I saw the interviews last night. Keep this in mind if you talk to him. 
they have to have probable cause to do the war to do these warrants the excuse that somebody made a complaint an anonymous complaint uh at that and they send a SWAT team to his house to four is bullshit. I think Even it was different it's Romanian. wasn't it four different residences that they raided that one time or was that the first time they raided yeah they still have laws in the U.S. Embassy uh and the U.S. Embassy was involved I think the embassy put them up to it wow. he needs to find out where the hell and uh, complain from there anyways like, meaning he's trying to say it's all it's uh, they all work together meaning this this is not accidental not. to do the warrant maybe there is a probable cause for it but also at the oh, same shit, time this isn't US right. embassy was involved to go in and taking him down Weird. so it's a it's a very uh, strange situation going on with this here so it's not just a one-sided story there's a lot of different sides to it but everybody jumped to conclusions celebrating this guy getting arrested. It was like their New Year's came five days before, three days before with this guy getting arrested. Mm -hmm. It was, it was weird. Not, not off, it reminds you of that, like uh, John Gotti when he was out and everybody was telling him, all the conciliators, they were all like, listen, you're poking at the wrong. He's like, shut up. He's like, mm -hmm. we're not supposed to be out. You know, it's a, it's a secret thing. You know what I mean? Like he's he, exactly that situation with him. It's like, you poked it, you poked it, just kind of disappear. You can't keep bother yo, you keep, can't keep messing with governments and they're not gonna come after your ass. That's this is a prime example well, of the same shit with Gotti. A couple thoughts. Um, a, a famous story that I always revisit with you that you said, I don't know who you were meeting with, you were meeting with some billionaire and you had a you had a business idea for this billionaire. And I think condescendingly but also like affectionately it was like, Pat, there's two types of people in this world. There's the person who's trying to make their first billion and the person that's already made their billions, the difference between us is I'm just trying to keep my money, AKA. Okay, there, there's no way there's a saying that involves billionaires and there's like fucking a hundred of them. <laughs> How many, like, you know, the guys are trying to get their second billion dollars. The Medici's, the Rothschilds, yeah. these types of people. You're the first type of person. Good luck on your endeavors. I'm gonna keep doing me, yeah. right? Essentially investing in stocks yeah. or investing in bonds, essentially yeah. if you want to put it that way. <clears throat> Let's not forget. Nobody knew Tate one year ago. No. Okay, unless you're a kickboxer guy. Yeah. Nobody knew Tate whatsoever. Okay, so he's essentially working on his first billion, if you know what I mean. So, you know, you in today's society, whether you're they say good, the first bad, billion is up the hardest, or down, true. it's all about views, it's all about eyeballs, it's all about status. So he's trying to make a name for himself. The problem is what, what this is kind of akin to is like if we all read Greek mythology as a kid, Icarus. You know, he flew a little too close to the sun and he got burnt. Yep. Um, regarding, I think, Romania, if I may address that, um, I had a conversation with a buddy uh, who lives in Colombia. He was, uh, we were hanging out yesterday. I go, hey, listen, what happened to innocent until proven guilty? He goes, Saz, you live in America. That's a real sweet idea. In Colombia, it's guilty until proven innocent. Mm -hmm. Like he told the story of a buddy who got his house taken away from the government and it's taken 10 years Jeez. of legal nonsense to try to get his house back that he's entitled to. So I don't know the framework in Romania, but something tells me in corrupt countries, you can kind of just do what you want to do. Yeah, bro, money the, talks. The, the one thing I will say about Romania, do you think this is a good look or a bad look for the country of Romania? It's going to depend on if, it's, if shit actually happened or not. Nobody has done more to help tourism and to make Romania popular as it is now, then Tate. If the, oh man, I would push back on this so much. So this is something that I, um, wait, did we talk about this? I forget what I say on stream versus private. I've had like three private conversations about this a while ago. Um, have we talked about Romania's reputation? Stop me if you've heard this one before. Um, my guess is going to be that these, um, when, when you've got these Euro Eastern European countries, um, these Eastern European countries like desperately want to join like the first world. They want to be like a, um, they want to be like real countries, right? Like the Baltics have been trying really hard to improve all of their shit. Um, and then places like Poland have been working really hard to be like the fastest growing egg satellite, et cetera. Um, and the, uh, yeah, like Romania, Ukraine, these are like historically really corrupt countries. You don't want to look corrupt, right? These, these people want to look better. If you've got a guy that's bragging about going to your country as like a Romanian fucking sex trafficker, and like that's what he's like known for, then, um, yeah, I mean, I feel like you should probably expect to have some eyes on you. There's gonna be a target on your back. If you're doing anything fucky at all, you're gonna get fucking cooked. You're gonna get roasted, would be my guess. That'd be my guess, but. 
I saw that you listed me as one of your neurodivergence of the year. True narcissistic projection on your part considering your psychology, Stephen. Sorry, another Pascal email. Throughout history, the pattern of behavior is responsible for all the misery we've ever had to wade through. And in spite of you, empathetic people have collectively moved everyone forward. You're the lizard-brained evolutionary anomaly that needs to be extinguished from the species. Your contribution in this personal conflict was merely experimental. And now that I'm armed with the knowledge necessary to raise awareness and push to eliminate all of you lizard brain non-paths from the equation, you've served your purpose. The dis this display on your part is rather sad. You think validation for a bunch of un irl chuds and another round of cyberbullying me is going to do the trick this time? You're so pathetically predictable. Seeing how you've exhausted your utility, I'll be going no contact with you and your community. And eventually, everyone will abandon you. An impressive amount of people already have. Drop dead soon, yeah? Question mark. Tate didn't live in Romania. You if he lived here. in Croatia, if he lived in Serbia, if he lived in somewhere in Russia, nobody would be talking about Romania. Of course. Like in a in, and and he's said only good things about Romania. Uh, I come here. It's a Christian country. Yes, it's corrupt, but everywhere it's corrupt. The <laughs> difference is you can pay people off here. Mm -hmm. I, 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 there's nice people, nice women, like. It, it's it's like almost done the exact same thing that Borat did for Kazakhstan. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody know the Kazakhstan yeah. before, but yeah. the difference is to, Borat kind of yeah, clowned exactly. Kazakhstan. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Tate did good things for Romania. We're talking about Romania. Bro, he has a casino there. You know how much money the the with taxes that they're gonna get for the country. Are you My understanding is I think that people that run casinos and should do that because it gets them access to like illegitimate things. Like if you're running a casino in Romania, then you're probably in with like some <coughs> corrupt people. And, or so I've been told. And by told, I mean, I've seen on the internet and probably random Reddit comments, so who the fuck knows. Crazy, bro? Yeah, so he's, um, I don't know. Look, I, I here's what I actually wanna say. You talked about like the people that love Tate, they're coming to his defense. The people that hate Tate are just jumping on it. By the way, now, for whether it's me, whether it's you, whether it's anybody out there listening, now is the easiest time ever to shit on Tate. Of to pile on, I knew it, he's a scumbag. Mm. Like, but, like, now is actually where you show conviction and actually show friendship and actually show someone, you know what, you respect. So for me, I'm not believing any of this nonsense. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand by my innocent until proven guilty. Good. And I'm, we've had a great time with Tate. I have nothing but good things to say about Tate. Are there going to be some things we disagree upon? Sure. Yeah. I disagree with you. Yeah. You're one of my best friends. Yeah. Same with Pat. <clears throat> but I, I'm not believing any of this nonsense. I, 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 again, innocent until proven guilty. Pull up the story I just Tate said explicitly went into business with mafia types. Gotcha. It just came out an hour ago. I agree with you, Adam. P push for sure. So, oh, by the way, one other very uh, Have you ever done coding? got on nope. yesterday saying, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, what's her I don't name? think I've Eliza, ever done a strong painkiller ever. I was going to do, remember, we were going to do those dental streams after I had my wisdom teeth taken out. I was like, we're going to do, let's see how long we can go suffering the pain before I have to take that, um, what is it, like hydrocodone, I think. Um, but it, it didn't hurt anywhere near as much as I thought it did. We never ended up eating them. So I don't know if I've ever taken a strong painkiller in my life. So something like that. Okay, let me read this article and I'll tell you what she said. Mm -hmm. Ex-kickboxer Andrew Tate detained by Romanian rape and human traffic case. Okay, go down. All right, so uh, Romanian prosecutors asked the Bucharest court on Friday to extend detention on oh, Andrew Tate 30 days. Uh, but after the divisive internet personality was arrested on suspicion of human trafficking. Tate, a former kickboxer, uh, and his brother Tate. Okay, got that. And uh, anti-organized crime prosecutors mm -hmm. have notified the rights and liberties judge with the Bucharest court with a proposal to remand the four suspects for 30 days. The brothers declined to comment on Thursday, but their lawyer confirmed they had been dis detained. Prosecutors said the Tate brothers have been under criminal investigation since April. The four suspects appear to have created an organized crime group with the purpose of recruiting, housing, and exploiting women by forcing them to create pornographic content meant to be seen on specialized websites for a cost. Go a little lower. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Uh, prosecutors said they would have gained uh, uh, imp uh, important sums of money. Prosecutors said they found six women who had been sexually exploited by the suspects. Tate gained notoriety for misogynistic comments and hate speech. He said uh, women are partially responsible for being raped and they belonged to men. A number of social media platforms banned Tate, including Twitter, but his account here 
became active no, again November after the platform was taken over by Elon Musk in one of his tweets following his return to platform. What did Tate say to upset the global elite? People think that like people like the global elite want men to be weak. So when you give, this is what Sneeko says all the time, when you give messages to empower young men, then the global elite want to take you down. Because I guess they want weak men, I guess. I don't know. Or uh, said he was flying to California to tell Musk he was a legend. Tate appeared to have sent a tweet on Friday suggesting he had access to his phone and social media while in custody. Early this week, the British national was told to get a life by climate activist Greta Thunberg on Twitter. Okay, we know that whole story, how this mm -hmm. thing takes, uh, uh, takes place. But so there are six. So one of these girls uh, uh, who was on the uh, uh, Twitter spaces yesterday said the following. She says, look, you have to keep in mind that I've been dealing with one of the uh, I've been dealing with one of the uh, individuals that's uh, uh, making these claims women that's making these claims uh, since summer about uh, uh, that she was taken advantage of and I've been working with her since April or May this lady said I said I, I can't give you all the details I can't say anything I can't do this I can't do that because I'm you know I'm representing her I'm helping her out but this is real they have been doing this and the phrase that was constantly being used yesterday is the following uh, phrase called the lover boy allegation. I don't know if you're familiar with the lover boy allegation. Pull up lover boy allegation. Type in lover boy allegation, which uh, <laughs> uh, lover boy human. Okay, right there. That's the first one. Yeah. Okay. So uh, zoom in so we can read it in. So lover boys or Romeo pimps are human traffickers who usually operate by trying to make young girls or boys fall in love with them. Sometimes they manipulate young people in other ways. Once they have victims under their influence, they exploit them. For instance, in sex industry. Lover boy method changing due to the internet and social media. Traditionally, lover boy seduces young, uh, vulnerable girls and boys over a lengthy period of time in order to exploit them sexually. Later on, this practice is being used less and less. Nowadays, lover boys resort more quickly and frequently to threatening their victims using blackmail and violence. The internet they, and social based. media no, are playing no, 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 an increasing no, 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 role no, 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 in this phenomenon. For instance, social media provides lover boys with much greater scope for establishing contact with victims and gathering information about vulnerable boys and girls. This makes it easier for them to force their young victims into the sex industry. So that is the methodology they're saying they used. Yeah, well, uh, if I may. Uh-oh. Careful. The definite, like, the lover, like, listen, I go out in South Beach. I have friends who are good-looking dudes, lover boys, like pimp type dudes what they're describing are sociopaths and yeah. criminals yeah okay since when is being a good-looking suave methodical dude a bad thing i think that's actually a good thing so they're they're kind of copying and pasting and and, and a, a a nice name over actually a very criminal intensive yeah. type of description so I don't know this this Bro, lover boy thing. Have you guys seen? Have you go on anything that Dan Blazarian's doing? It's going yeah. to his going yeah. to his Instagram. It's Dan Blazarian, Pat, with like fifty yeah. of the hottest, and he's just in the back chilling. They, he just lover boy, lover boy. I mean, bro, yeah. like obviously, and mind you, these girls are getting the notoriety. They're with them. They're on Instagram. All these girls have mm. a massive following everywhere. Everybody's getting paid. He's the like Adam said, lover boy. He's the playboy, and it's an yeah. image. But like I said, Pat. The, it's all. I'm not a conspiracy guy, but it's all cahoots. Everybody, if the U.S. embassy is involved, and they go, bro, go in there, get the cameras, record it. And mind you, when this hit, Pat, it hit every, all my notifications. Bing, 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 bing. It's a, it's a, it's an effort by everybody all together to try to knock this guy down because he messed with them. Let me tell you something about these lover boys. Okay, whatever this is. There's exceptions and there are rules. Okay, yeah. let's talk about the rule because obviously we can go to exceptions. If you're Dan Bilzerian, mm -hmm. if you're Andrew Tate, for example, if you're Leonardo DiCaprio, if yeah. you're Matthew McConaughey, if you're George Clooney, you don't need to resort to this type of nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> you have girls throwing themselves at you. Yeah. I hate this argument because all streamers and people in entertainment are rapey losers. So many of you are rapey. If you're a streamer and you're listening to me, you're probably a rapey loser i've said this a million times i don't know why they do it but they do do it there's a lot of streamers out there they're like you don't need to rape anybody and they do it anyway i don't know why they do it but this lady like oh no these guys are girls all the time anyway they never have to do creepy shit like this yeah they don't but they still do don't know why but they absolutely do it there are so many stories of her there are so many things that i know from creepy rapey loser fucking streamer guys that do this shit over and over and over and over and over again okay you don't need to induce you don't need a drug you don't yeah. need to like manipulate you get what you want now the exceptions you're 
scumbag like Bill Cosby or Harvey mm -hmm. Weinstein. Those are the exceptions. But if you're an exceptional dude or you're a high dude of man of status, you don't need to resort to these types of measures. Mm -hmm. It's just something you don't need to do as a dude. Yeah. The worst dudes out there are the guys that can't get laid, that get no attention. It's so wrong. I understand why he would say that, but it's just so wrong. Bro, anytime I've got like a friend that's a girl that's going to like meet a streamer guy or whatever, I always give the same warnings. Like, watch out, don't get raped because all of them are rapey. They're all rapey and disgusting. I don't know why they do it. They don't have to do it. I don't know why they do it, but they do do it. And it happens over and over and over and over and over again, okay? Everybody is in, in this fucking industry. These rapey fucking autistic schizoid power hungry fucking dudes. It just is. I don't know why. From a girl's got nothing going on for them. Those are the sociopaths that you need to look out for. Yeah, Those are the rapists. Those are the criminals. I'm not buying this bullshit. I mean, and Pat, and Pat the, and the beauty, like you said, is that he's lucky that it is Romania. And dude, he has, he has money, bro. He's not going to go to jail for for i don't think he's gonna go to jail at all yeah not it depends on what he's being charged with bro you have no idea he's not gonna go to jail at all if it's for some dumb shit sure but if it's like a criminal investigation or like fucking sex trafficking like bro epstein is dead okay that guy was one of the richest people in the world he couldn't buy his way out of his problems i don't think you can just assume like oh no he's rich he'll be out of blah, blah, blah. like no shot dude but that's the problem because I know Pat here, the Rico thing with that, what Giuliani and them did, is that mm -hmm. now think about this. If he has somebody in his crew that was being shady, does he get in trouble? So, so what they're, what they're one of the things, you guys said a lot of different things here, so I want to make sure we address this. Lover boy, Hugh Hefner was a lover boy. Guy. Exactly. Yeah, number okay, one. He's the ultimate lover boy. But was Hugh Hefner forcing women to work for him under threat of violence and then not paying them? Right, because isn't that that's kind of what the central claim is for the Andrew Tate shit was that women were being physically that was included physically threatened um, or maybe physically attacked. I don't remember. It, it might have been attacked too. Um, that it, that if women were undergoing this type of treatment, that's a lot different than like oh he was with a lover boy that was like you know just with women because he was rich. That's a lot different. Was Hefner trafficking people? Boy guy and you don't and you don't think he praised. had accusations? Well, of course, he had women still to this day accusing him of like holding them hostage. He did, but the only difference is he didn't call out climate change activists. <laughs> yeah, he didn't exactly. call out exactly. the left. Uh, he didn't call out any of this stuff. So, th th well, but he was also when when was Hugh Hefner like the most popular? Right, probably in a different time. Right, there's a there's a rule of thumb. If you go after the establishment, be ready. Mm -hmm. yep. If you go after the establishment, be ready, especially the louder you are. By the way. Yep. There are only a few people loud enough to go after the establishment. One of the guys today that's super loud is number one is Musk. Yep. Mm -hmm. And Tate's in the top ten of the loudest against the establishment. We know what happened when Trump went after the establishment. Yep. We're seeing what's going on with Musk going after the establishment. We're seeing what he went after the establishment. Those are a couple things you got to be careful with. Here's a part about what you just said. One of the claims is what they're trying to do, okay, is you know how a lot of times like, well, how come he doesn't come to U.S.? I don't want to come to U.S. I don't want to come to U.S. I don't want to come to U.S. Mm -hmm. One of the claims that one of the lawyers made is they're trying to use this to bring him to U.S. courts to get him to be seen guilty. Mm -hmm. This is an outcome of pr trying to bring him here. Extradition. To bring him, yes, to bring him here and have the U.S. courts hold him accountable. Wow. Okay, because... Uh, who is he calling out? If you were to take out of the 196 countries or so that we have, give or take, what country does he call out the most? U.S. Yeah, he seriously. Do you know what happened when Trump went after the establishment? He became the president of the United States. What the f***? Not, is there even the a Western close? Western society, Western Nothing. culture, global Western elite. society yeah. is the first 100%. country he calls out nonstop. He's con constantly calling out. Okay. And what's he calling out about the Western society? The, the, like making men into, like making us soft. Is rigged. And, and he's, he's basically saying that, you know, when you want to come and let's say take over a country, you got to take the men, get the men out, make them feminine and mm -hmm. da, da 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 And oh my he's just God. calling out all the woke shit. Who, you know, the, the, the woke folks don't want to hear that. The left folks don't want to hear that. Of course not. The majority <laughs> so, of women also don't want to no, hear that. No, no, no. I'm telling you, I, yesterday, the, the amount of uh, uh, DMs that I got, I've never gotten DMs like this. You piece of shit. You oh, this, really? you die. By you the way, I might as well die. Getting and the you, same nonsense. You know, you, yeah. you, I can't believe you said this, and I can't believe you said that. To me, that's <laughs> not triple, uh, 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 you know, typical protocol where people message me on stuff like that. But to defend mm -hmm. him, he's that much of a trigger to the left because Greta, don't forget that, that Greta. post, the tweet by her got a couple hundred million views on Twitter. And it this was is Greta all along. Mm -hmm. That thing got a couple hundred million views under Twitter. What does that tell you? 
she's got a following. Of course. She's got influence. People actually want to sit there and believe that she's right. And by the way, thank God she's 19 years old. Because some people would come back and said, you, you're going after a minor. Right. Yeah. But she's 19 years old, so it's not like she's a... We all know her as 12 years old or 15 yeah. years old. She's no longer 15 years old. She's mm -hmm. 19 years old today. So, yeah, they're trying to bring him to the States to... That's what a lot of people said. They're trying to bring him out here. But we'll see. It, it, here's where I think Tate message gets lost in translation. So when we sat with him, I said, what's the number one reason you thought you were canceled? He goes, I already know. I already know. Because I asked it, I'm like, if, is it masculinity? Is it toxic masculinity? Is it chauvinism? Is it calling out the system? Is it calling out the matrix? Is it male self-improvement? He's like, I already know. Uh, the reason I got canceled is because I call out the establishment. I call out the matrix. They don't want to hear what I have to say. But if you talk about takes messaging, um, I believe there's three major um, themes that he talks about. So okay. number one is he's called out the matrix and the system and everything and the global elite that comes with that. Cool, fair. We just addressed that. Number two is what he's labeled as a misogynist or a chauvinist and toxic masculinity. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how he's labeled. Like if you look at any article out there, any headline, it's male chauvinist, Andrew Tate, you know, toxic masculinity, Andrew Tate. And that's kind of what he's framed as. But if you actually peel back the onion and you actually listen to what Tate's saying and not taking it little sound bites, all he's talking about at the end of the day is male self-improvement. Mm -hmm. And that's essentially everything that we stand for here at Valuetainment. That's everything that, we, that I talk about here is no matter what you're doing in life as a man, there's always room for self-improvement. Personal responsibility, being positive, whether that's being stronger, faster, cooler, wealthier, doper, sexier, everything is about status okay so when it comes to self-improvement here i'm gonna go on a little rant for a second right. the the number one thing that a man can have is status there's three types of status that a man can reach there's number one wealth okay and everything that comes with wealth money success ambition your network everything that you collect resources that's number one part of status number two is attractiveness as a man status so meaning you're good looking you're in shape you're 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 suave you're you um you dress well like jordan peterson talks about dressing in suits yeah. and looking like a man so that is attractiveness women obviously like dudes with six packs and most like mm -hmm. that's part of that and then the third one is having game now everyone there's different types of game out there that can improve your status so whether it's you're you're funny you're a comedian you're clever you're witty you um you're romantic you like you're kind whatever it is that's your game now here's the deal if you're in the top 10% of any of those three categories, you will get women and, you, and women will come to you. What do I mean? If you've got a ton of money, I don't care if you look like yeah, we've seen Jeff it. Bezos, yeah. women are going to be attracted to you. Number two, if you're an attractive guy, Jeff Bezos you're in looks shape, fire. That's kind of dude, a weird call out, but. Like, that's done. Like, no matter how much money you have, you're going to get women. If you've got game, whether you're a funny comedian or whether you're a suave dude, a romantic, sing, a dumb, yeah. whatever it is, whatever your skill set is, if you're in the top 10% of any of those three categories, you'll get women. Now, to put this all together, like Tate would do, he would say, keep working on all three. Make your money. Work your ass out. Improve your game. <laughs> work Learn your how to ass talk out. to women. <laughs> you know, famously in the red pill community, what he's, he's a part of, it's money, muscles, game, and hold frame. Mm -hmm. So... Again, back to my initial point. Yes, he talks about the system and he talks about people label him as a misogynist and a, and a toxic masculinity. But at the end of the day, I think the reason that he's resonated with so many dudes is he's like, nobody's coming to save you, bro. Yeah. Nobody's walking in this door. You need to do it yourself. Keep improving. Keep working. Outwork, out strategize, out improve, out last. And that's his messaging. But nobody wants to talk I about I think I got that. back on this so podcast like this on, um, watch I got back on the sixth in three days. Did you ever Is this like a trend where these guys have like they call these things like emergency podcasts? 